This is a video about the GCSE chemistry topic of the Harbour process. It links backwards to equilibrium, which you studied as part of the rates of reaction topic, and forwards to MPK fertilisers, which is coming up next. In this video, we're going to talk about why the Harbour process is necessary, say where the raw materials for it come from and what the reaction conditions are, and justify those conditions using Le Chatelier's principle. The Harbour process is an industrial chemical process that was developed by Fritz Harbour in the early part of the 20th century as a way of making ammonia, this molecule on the right, NH3. Ammonia is really important because it's the main component of most of the fertilisers that our farmers use on their crops to make sure that we can grow enough food to feed everybody. And so Harbour actually won the Nobel Prize for his work to develop this process. At the same time, you can use ammonia for some slightly less nice things like making explosives. And actually, Harbour was a big fan of chemical warfare, which led his wife, who was a super cool chemist by the name of Clara Imovar. She was the first woman in Germany to get her PhD in chemistry. Um, and she was not a big fan of this. And she actually committed suicide kind of in protest. So you've already met ammonia much, much earlier in the GCSE when you did the structure and bonding topic. It's one of the eight named examples of small covalent molecules or small molecular substances that you're supposed to be able to draw dot and cross diagrams for. So you should already know how to draw this diagram. And you should also know that small molecular substances always have low melting points and low boiling points, because in order for them to melt or boil, it's not the strong covalent bonds inside the molecule that break, it's the weak intermolecular forces between molecules. And so ammonia is a gas at room temperature. It's made out of hydrogen and nitrogen, reacting in a 3 to 1 ratio, as you can see in this equation here. And you hopefully recognise the slightly funky arrow in the middle of it, which shows you that this is a reversible reaction. Now, in order to make the ammonium, we need to get the hydrogen and the nitrogen. The nitrogen is just extracted from the air, but it does need to be separated from the other gases. We couldn't just use air in the harbour process because the oxygen would react with everything else, and so we wouldn't get the pure ammonia that we want. The hydrogen can be made in a few different ways, but the most common way is for it to be extracted from methane by reacting it with steam. This makes carbon monoxide and also the hydrogen. In order for the reaction to take place, the mixture of gases in that 3 to 1 ratio are fed into the reactor. There they react together in the presence of a hot iron catalyst at a temperature of 450 degrees C and a pressure of about 200 atmospheric pressures. So that means 200 times the normal pressure that is just in the room with you right now. The iron catalyst is used because it helps to speed up the rate of reaction without needing to heat things up any further. So that's going to reduce energy costs and be better for the environment. The other two conditions are a little bit of a compromise and we're now going to look at why and how. In Unit 6, you learnt that a reversible reaction can reach a point called equilibrium where the forward and the backward reactions are happening at the same rate. In a closed system, Le Chatelier's principle tells us that if we make any change, the system will shift to try and counteract that change. So if we increase the pressure, the system will try to decrease it. If I look at my equation for the Harbour process, I can see that on the right-hand side in the products, there are fewer molecules than on the left-hand side in the reactants. I've got two ammonia molecules compared to three hydrogen and one nitrogen, so four in total on the left side of the equation. That therefore tells me that if I increase the pressure, the lower pressure side of the system will be favoured. And this is going to favour the forward reaction and move the equilibrium to the right, which is what I want because it means I'm going to make more ammonia. However, the higher the pressure gets, the more expensive this is going to be for the company making the ammonia and also the more dangerous it's going to be. So although we use quite a high pressure of 200 atmospheric pressures, we're not going to increase it any more because of the cost and the safety implications. Trying to explain the temperature that's used in the harbour process is a bit more complicated, but stick with me here. In a reversible reaction, I've always got one exothermic reaction and one endothermic reaction. The exothermic reaction will release energy to its surroundings and heat them up, while the endothermic reaction will absorb energy from its surroundings and would cool things down. Le Chatelier's principle tells me that if I have a closed system that's at equilibrium and I heat it up, the system will shift and it will favour the endothermic reaction, which would cool it down. Likewise, if I cool down that system, it's going to favour the exothermic reaction, which would heat it up again. Now, the problem I have is that the forward reaction in the harbour process is exothermic. So heating it up would favour the backward reaction instead of the forward reaction, and I'd get less ammonia. So it would make sense from a yield point of view to make this reaction as cold as possible. That's when I would make the most ammonia. 
but we already learned in Unit 6 that heating a reaction up is a good way to make it go faster, and cooling it down will make it go slower. So if I were to do this reaction at a very cold temperature, I'd make lots of ammonia, but it might take me a year to make it. So instead, I pick a compromise temperature. I use 450 degrees, which gives me a yield of about 15-17%, which still doesn't sound great, but is at least happening at a fast enough rate to make it economically worthwhile. Because only about 15% of the nitrogen and hydrogen in the reactor are going to make ammonia, what's going to come out of the reactor is a mixture of gases. It's not pure ammonia, and that's no good. We need to separate the ammonia from the nitrogen and hydrogen so that it can be used further and they can be recycled back into the reactor to try to react again. So what's going to happen is the mixture of gases that come out of the reactor are pumped into a condenser, which is going to cool them down. And it's going to cool them to a point where the ammonia becomes a liquid, but the nitrogen and hydrogen are still gases and therefore they're easy to separate. And this works because the boiling point of ammonia is higher than that of nitrogen or hydrogen. So bearing in mind these numbers, what temperature could you cool that mixture to so that ammonia was below its boiling point and was a liquid, but nitrogen and hydrogen were still above theirs? Hopefully you've identified that we need a temperature that's somewhere between minus 195 and minus 34 degrees C. That's it for the harbour process. Thank you for watching and if you would like to see more videos then don't forget to like and subscribe.